a magnificent bird, and the bones were gone, and he flew off singing this song. My mother, she killed me, my father, he ate me, and pretty little Marlin, she gathered my bones. Then she did lay me beneath a fine juniper tree, kuwit kuwai, what a pretty bird am I, kuwit kuwai, what a pretty bird am I. And the bird flew off. He flew and he flew and he flew until he came to a goldsmith's house. And the goldsmith was fashioning a golden chain and heard this beautiful music. But he came out only hearing the end of the song and said, Bird, bird, would you sing that song for me again? And the bird said, Nay, I'll not sing it twice for nothing. You'll have to give me something. So he tossed up the golden chain and the bird sang again. And Please join my us. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. Pretty little marlin, she gathered my bones. Then she did lay me beneath the fine juniper tree. Coo and coo why? What a pretty bird am I? Coo and coo why? What a pretty bird am I? And the bird flew and flew and flew, holding the chain in his right talon. And he lit on a shoemaker's house. And the shoemaker was fashioning a pair of shoes when again he heard this magnificent song. And he ran out with only one shoe on and said, Bird, bird, would you sing me that song again? And the bird said, Nay, I'll not sing it twice for nothing. You'll have to give me something. And he said, Wife, wife, I'm making a pair of red shoes. Go get them from the top shelf. And he did. And he took those shoes and he tossed them up. And the bird caught it with its right talon and continued to sing. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. Pretty little marlin, she gathered my bones. Then she did lay me beneath the fine juniper tree. Coo it, coo why? What a pretty bird am I? Coo it, coo why? What a pretty bird am I? And the bird flew off. He flew and flew until he came to a mill. And there were twenty millers who were hacking a millstone. Hick, hack, hick, hack. Do this with me. Hick, hack, hick, hack. Hick, hack, hick, hack. And they heard the bird singing. One miller came out and heard part of the song. Back into another, two and three and four more millers came out and listened and listened to the bird singing until there were 18 millers standing there. And finally, the last two millers came out and said, Bird, we didn't hear the whole song. Would you please sing it for us again? And the bird said, Nay, I'll not sing it twice for nothing. And he said, well, if this millstone belonged to me alone, I would be happy to give it to you. But it doesn't. It belongs to all 20 millers. And they said, yes, yes, let's give it to the bird. And all 20 of them had to strain and lift and lift up this millstone. But magically, it fit right around the bird's neck like a collar. And he sang this song. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. Pretty little marlin, she gathered my bones. Then she did lay me beneath the vine juniper tree. Coo it, coo why? What a pretty bird am I? And the bird flew and flew until it came back to its own home. And the father said, I hear this beautiful song. I feel happy as though I'm going to see an old friend again. I think I'm going to go out. But his wife pulled him back and said, No, no, I feel, I feel as though the earth is going to swallow me up. My blood is boiling. I have such a headache. Please, please, please don't go outside. But he shook her off and said, Yes, I must, I must go outside. And he did. And as soon as he did and he heard the bird sing, he let fly a golden chain that fell right around his neck. And he came back inside and said, Look, Look, the bird has given me a gift. Look at this chain. And the little girl said, but I want to go out. I want to go out too. And her mother pulled her back and pulled her back and said, please, please, I believe that this is the end of the world for me. Don't go. Please don't go. But the girl just ran outside. The woman fell down. Her hat fell off. She banged her head. And the child looked up and the bird dropped those red shoes. She put them on and she danced. And she danced, and she danced back into the house and said, Look, mother, look, the bird has given me a gift. Why don't you go outside and see if he has a gift for you, too? <laughs> she said, No, no, I won't. But then she couldn't stand it anymore, and her head felt like it was just going to burst, and so she did. And of course, as soon as she came out, the bird let fly. Crash! And down came that millstone, flattening her. Flame. And out of that mist, there stepped 
a little boy, as red as blood and as white as snow. And with the full moon shining, he held his father's hand and he held his sister's hand and they all went in to supper. Oh. I'm Judith Heineman. I'm Dan Marcott. I'm a storyteller. I'm a musician. And we have been performing together for eight years. Eight years ago, we were commissioned by the Oriental Institute as part of the University of Chicago to create a show for their Mesopotamian gallery. So the original program was called The Magic Carpet, Songs and Stories from Ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. And we bring in artifacts. Dan plays the... Um, Kinnor Harp. The Kinnor Harp, the Oud from Egypt. Um, yes, the Kinnor Harp and the Ocarina. And so we kind of consider ourselves edutainers as well. We bring in cuneiform tablets as well. We are road scholars, R-O-A-D, with the Illinois Humanities Council. And Dan can tell you a little bit about um, some of the other programs that we tour throughout the state of Chicago and through the public library system here in Chicago as well. We have a show of stories and songs about Chicago. We have a show about the environment. We have a show uh, with mainly ghost stories, as some of the Grimm's Grimace, but lots of ghost stories as well. And another show, Unicorns and Dragons, which is mythical tales and legendary beasts and lots of fun music and songs and stories. And uh, not all dragons are devouring dragons. In April, I was in China on a storytelling uh, delegation, and dragons there are benevolent creatures. So occasionally we'll slip in a Chinese dragon story as well. And Dan plays a variety of instruments, and he might um, tell you just a little bit about what he has with him. Uh, this instrument is, a six, is an eight-course Renaissance lute. It has 15 strings, movable frets, and a bent neck, which helps with the tuning. I own about 27 different instruments, and I'm going to have Judith hold the microphone, and I'll play a little bit. Put it on the lute. And we're happy to tour all over the country as well with many of our shows. And if you want to get in touch with us, uh, we both have websites. And um, mine is www.storytelling.org forward slash Heinemann, H-E-I-N-E-M-A-N. Mine is www.bardsong.net. And my music is available at cdbaby.com and downloadable on iTunes. And Dan and I are making our first CD um, based on the excerpt that you saw tonight. It's called Grimm's Grimace, The Darker Side of Traditional Fairy Tales, the way they were originally intended before they were cleaned up for the Victorian children. Okay, thank you very much.